A um, lot of people have hope so faith. <coughs> There's hope so faith where many, many times I have visited with people, and you try to give them a word of encouragement in a situation, and you say, you know, God, I would really truly believe that God wants to help you. Maybe it's in a marriage situation or uh, other things. And what I get is, I hope so. It, you know, it's hope so. I hope so. It isn't, okay, I believe that, I receive it, I'm going to I'm, I'm take that to heart. It's, I hope so. And I really start thinking about that. And when you think about hope so faith, hope so faith is kind of all uh, has to do with your mind, what you think. Hope so faith is really grounded in your emotions, um, your feelings, your what you kind of feed on. That's why right now I don't really watch the news too much because there is much hope in the news. Amen? However, I do have other sources that I go to that encourage me in my faith. One of them is Dutch Sheets. Uh, he's on YouTube, and he has give me anybody? give me fifteen. Give, give him fifteen. Give him meaning give God fifteen. And he's been going to all the states that are in uh, that they're going through the recounts and things and praying. And so he'll have a word, and and in giving that word, it gives encouragement, and it gives encouragement how to pray and decrees to make. And so I encourage you, go Dutch Sheets. Very easy name. Uh, good source of encouragement if you're concerned as we are about the situation politically. But we see we need faith in this hour. Faith is so important. We can't just hope so. We have to have faith that comes from God so that we know so. But it doesn't just happen. And that's what I want to talk about today. Uh, I am tired of COVID. I am tired of all of the devastation and the loss. I mean, we lost how many holidays and we lost the ability to visit with people that need visits like at the nursing home or assisted living. Uh, we can't go ministry to them. Uh, our Bible studies, we got a brief window where we were in a little bit and then we got shut down again. And, and these people are hurting. And with everything going on, there is, can be real damage to our spiritual life. And our faith can, can be shaken because everything else is getting shaken. So I'm just going to lay a little bit of groundwork on this, but then I want to get at the end of it. I want to give you some words of encouragement, how you can get word, a word of faith from the Lord to be able to stand. John 1 says, In the beginning before all time was the word, meaning Christ. And the word was with God, and the word was God himself. He was continually existing in the beginning or co-eternally with God. All things were made and came into existence through him and without him not even one thing was made that has come, in, that has come into being. In him, meaning in Jesus, in the word, Jesus is the word, remember that, was life and the power to bestow life and the life that he's giving is the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness, and the darkness did not understand it, or overpower it, or appropriate, or could, could control it, or grab a hold of it, or absorb it, and is unreceptive to it. I've used this illustration many times. If I could make this room as dark as possible, let's say, where's the darkest place you've ever been? If we could make it that dark, but I had even the light on my phone or 
a match. That darkness is not going to conquer that light. It can't conquer that light. Light, and especially this, this is Jesus. He, his light is unconquerable. Can't be stopped. And we need to know that light in our lives, amen? We need the word in our life. We need Jesus in our life. Goes on later in John 1, it says, He, meaning Christ, was in the world, and, through, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. So he, here's the creator of all things. He was the word. He was the one who he cre helped create everything, the trinity. God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit created the world. He came to that which was his own, that which belonged to him, his world, his creation, his possession. And those who were his own people, the Jewish nation, did not receive or welcome him. And here's good news. But to as many as did receive and welcome him, he gave the right the authority, the privilege to become children of God, that is to those who believe in, adhere to, trust in, and rely on his name. You see, when we receive Jesus Christ as our personal Savior by putting our faith in him, it isn't a small thing. We become children of God. We are a new creation. You belong to the creator of everything. You belong, you are now royalty because he is king of kings and lord of lords. You are royalty. Take your finger, this finger, point it up in the air. Okay, now put it at your chest and say, I'm royalty. I'm royalty. And I say, you absolutely are, your highness, and I, well, <laughs> highness? Yeah, your highness. I am royalty. In Jesus Christ, you become something new. You say, I don't feel like royalty. Well, I look in the mirror and I don't look like royalty. In the morning when I go to shave, I'm like, Ugh. You see, there's a difference made. Now that we belong to Jesus, the authority, listen, the authority and the privilege of being his child, of God's child. And that needs to, our thinking has to change. Who are born not of blood, natural conception, nor of the will of the flesh, physical impulse, nor of the will of man, that is of a natural father. But we are born of God, that is a divine and supernatural birth. They are born of God, spiritually transformed, renewed, and sanctified. That's you. Read that with me. You're born of God. How many of you are born of God? You're born again. Okay. Say, I am spiritually transformed. Spiritually Say it out loud. I'm spiritually transformed. Renewed. Renewed. <laughs> sanctified. Sanctified. Because of Jesus. Because of Jesus. God. And the word, meaning Christ became flesh and lived among us, and we actually saw his glory. Glory as belongs to the one and only begotten Son of the Father, the Son who is truly unique, the only one of his kind, who is full of grace and truth, absolutely free of deception. You know, I talked about suppressing the truth. Jesus never suppresses the truth. Truth is in Jesus. So the more that we have a Jesus in our life, the more that we have truth. The more that we have the word in our life, the more truth is in our life. Amen? Amen. The more word, meaning the more of Jesus, the more of the Bible. I'm going to go get my Bible. I knew there was a reason I brought her over here. Didn't I? The more that we have of this in our life, the more of, that we can know Jesus. And we're free from deception. You know, one of the reasons that right now faith is being shaken in Christians. And Dutch Sheet said this. He went to one state and he said, the Christian's faith is being shaken. And, and it can be. It's hard not to have your faith shaken right now. 
The only way that I can not have my faith shaken, the only way that I can overcome despair and fear and, and like, oh no, feeling, the only way I could sleep at night was shutting the outside voices and dwelling on that truth of the word. Because I believe God. And I believe when I'd, he'd wake, when I'd wake up so very early in the morning, 3.30, 4 o'clock in the morning, and then he would start giving me stuff, it was because what I wanted was truth. I wanted God to reveal truth to me. I wanted the truth of the situation, not the false narrative that the, the Goliaths in the news media and the politicians want to give me. I want the truth. I'm sick of the lies. I am so tired of suppressing of truth because you want to get a false narrative. I'm tired of that. So the only source of truth that I know that will never fail me is, is Jesus and the Word of God. But remember, he's full of grace. Jesus is full of grace and truth. So when we get more of Jesus, this is what happens. For out of his fullness, meaning all that superabundance of his grace and his truth, we have all received grace upon grace, spiritual blessing upon spiritual blessing, favor upon favor, gift heaped upon gift. That comes from Jesus and the truth and the word. Amen? That's what concerned me during the time that we were shut down as a church was spiritual decline in God's people because I tell you, it's a struggle even for me sometimes just to get into the Word and spend time there. Oh, God, to do that. I've got to feed on the Word of God. Go through these quickly. So faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God or the Word of Christ. Your faith will grow when you spend time in the Word or with Jesus. Your faith will grow. How many of you believe that? Really, how many believe that? The more time I spend with Jesus in prayer, or I spend in the Word, my faith will grow. Because mm -hmm. that's the only source my poor faith can grow from. It's from there. Now, faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith means that I can look at the situation politically or with COVID and I can look and I can say, I don't like what I see, but I, my faith tells me that God is at work and God is going to move and God is going to deliver. That's my faith. It's what I hope for. This is a different type of hope. This is solid hope. Like I said last week, this is solid hope. My hope is in this place in nothing less but Jesus Christ and his righteousness. I'm putting my faith in him as King of kings and Lord of lords who will want to move righteously in our nation. I'm asking for him to move with righteousness in our nation. And without faith living within us, it would be impossible to please God. There's just no way we can, we can't, we have to have faith because it takes faith to know that he's real and it, when we come to him, he's going to, he's going to listen to us and hear us. We'll go quickly, Lord. Okay. And then, uh, this is the one about, you know, if, that if you confess with your mouth, Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God has raised you from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made under salvation. You can't be born again, again without faith. You have to have faith. Your heart has to be changed. Right? What happens when you put your faith in Jesus? Your sins are forgiven. Joy comes in. New life starts. It's awesome. That's the most amazing thing ever. And in Hebrews it says that, go on to the next one, that Jesus, in other translations, says is the author and the finisher of our faith. 
That's why we need more of Jesus, because he, we hear the word about Christ. It's beginning of our faith. It's beginning of our new life. But Jesus wants to finish that walk of faith. That's why we need Jesus. Okay, let's go to this. For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the division of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. That's the word of God. And that, what I'm going to talk about is the importance of the word of God being infused with the power of the Holy Spirit to be able to do this. Show that clip. Logos is the message. This is the written word of God. Right here. This is the written word of God. Now you can get it in different translations. You can even go back to the Hebrew and the Greek if you want. Logos is the word for this. The message. Now you can learn all you want about this and you should. You should study this. We should know this. We should be students of the word. This is the message. This shows us a lot of things. The whole thing is about Jesus. From the beginning to the end. And it's all about Jesus and eventually coming and dying on a cross, coming as a baby and dying on a cross and being raised from the dead so that we can be born again and we can be children of God just like I talked about. That's the Logos word. We need the Logos word. But there's something else that's well, I want to really emphasize today, and that's the Rhema word. Rhema is a communication of the message. There are times when your faith is so shaken that even the Logos word wasn't really, you can't get. Have you ever had the time when things are so bad that when you're reading the word of God and you just can't get anything out of it? Be honest. I can't get anything out of it. When we were sick with COVID, I could not, I had a hard time reading, even listening. I could not, it just like, oh, I just. <laughs> you know, there's times when the word, and things are going on in your, I, I don't think, I'm gonna read the word and I'm like. But then there are other times, and I've had this happen. Many years ago, I was going through a very difficult time. I was praying and praying and praying, and I'm like, God, I really need a word. I need, I need your help. And that's when he gave me the word, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power and a love and of a sound mind. You know, that was like a life word for me at that time. I had to lay a hold of that word of life and hang on to it for dear life. And you see, the rhema word is what we as believers can expect from the, from the Bible. How many of you know that if you just read the word of God and you say, Lord, I need a word of encouragement, but you go to Deuteronomy and you're reading all of the laws, you get really boring really fast. I'm sorry, but, you know, or you start reading about Judgment God's bringing on Israel and stuff, and you're like, oh man, that's not encouraging me much right now. But have you ever, how many of you have ever had the time when you've taken your Bible and you felt led to open it up? And when you open the Bible up, it was a verse. It was a verse. That gave you hope, and gave you a spark of faith. And when you did that, you're thinking, wow, that's like a drink of cold water to a thirsty soul. That's what Jesus wants to be right now. You're struggling right now with faith by looking at things. Ask Jesus to give you a word of hope from his word. I'm telling you, you're not going to have that if you don't 
Seek it and desire it and want it. Ephesians. Paul is praying for the Ephesians and he said down here in underline, making mention of you in my prayers that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. A few years ago, I preached on this. God had given me this picture. How many of you ever traveled to the mountains? Okay, you're traveling to the mountains, but let's say you're going to a, to a resort. You're given the directions, you're on the road to, you know, but it's getting dark. Now, the instructions say you've got to stay on this road. Wisdom says stay on this road. But there might be another sign that says shortcut or whatever, and you think, I think I can find another way. And you know what usually happens? You end up totally lost. That's the Christian life. But you're going to your destination and you get there and it's middle of night, all you see is dark. You go in and you get your room and you go to bed and you're like, I didn't see anything. It's supposed to be a beautiful place. I haven't seen a thing. But the sun comes up the next morning and you wake up and you pull back the blinds. And there's everything you ever hoped for. Beautiful scenery. Everything, you just like awestruck. See, that's when we need enlightenment. We need the light to come on. Couldn't see it at night, it's too dark. You couldn't see it in the midst of your traveling. You traveled through some of this, but you couldn't tell what it was. It was too dark. But the wisdom said, stay on the road, have revelation. The revelation was get this where you need to go. And then the enlightenment came when you could see. You see, God wants to give us spiritual wisdom, revelation of what his will and his word is. And then he wants our eyes to be enlightened to see how it's all going to come to pass. And you can ask for that because God wants to give it to you. But you've got to be willing to invest in a word. We're going to jump down to uh, just a quick one on the full armor of God. Final word, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on all God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all the strategies of the devil. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against the ruler, evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against, every, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. The devil wants to discourage you in this hour. He wants you to lose your faith. He wants you to doubt. Know this, whenever God is ready to do something big, the devil's going to work really hard to keep your faith from continuing. He wants to shatter your faith. Maybe it's praying for somebody in your family that's sick. Or something's going on and you really need an answer from God. The devil is going to want to stop you from having faith. So therefore put on every piece of God's armor so that you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Resist that temptation to doubt and to fear. Then after the battle, you will still be standing firm, standing ground, putting on the belt of truth. All of this stands on the word of God and on, truth, on, on the truth of the word of God. So you start with truth. It's the word of God is truth. I believe this is truth. You have to go in and say, I believe this is true. I believe God's speaking through me and it's true. I put on truth. I believe it. When God reveals something to you, believe it. Obey it. On the body armor of God's righteousness. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to 
forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. Believe that you're righteous in Christ, that your sins are forgiven, that, that he's making you into something awesome. Amen? That you're royalty. You're covered by the blood of Jesus. For shoes put on the peace that comes from the good news that you'll be fully prepared. Peace comes from the word of God. Believing the word of God. How many of you lack peace? If you lack peace, grab a hold of the word of God. The good news of the gospel. In addition to these, hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. How many of you go to bed at night and you get shot with arrows of worry? I was going to bed the other night and I just felt urged to pray for our granddaughter. I didn't tell Lori that I just felt like I just prayed for her. Well, I don't know if there's anything going on, but the devil, I think, wanted to stir up worry and things in, in me. I had to pray through and it didn't hurt to pray for my granddaughter. And maybe there was something, but I was praying for her. Well, one of the things that happened when I started praying for her and turning it over to the Lord and really pressing in, it brought peace back in my heart. Put on the salvation as your helmet and let me take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. That's where we need that rhema word of God that God has given us that we can use as a weapon. I can take any verse I want to, but if, if it isn't rhema word, if it isn't faith word from me, I can't use it well. So that verse that I was telling you about when I was really, really struggling, I had to use that as a weapon and say, no, this is, this is God has not given me the spirit of fear, but power to love himself by me. And I use that to fight with and to stand on. I was going to go to bed last night, lay down. I knew that I was going to be jumping out. I was laying on the other bed because I told Lori I might be jumping up and down during the night. Because sometimes if I don't write it down, then I forget it. So I sometimes I have to jump up and run, write it down, go back to bed. Oh, run. Back to bed. This is what the Lord gave me last night. In times of trouble, your source of hope and what you believe will be tested. In times of trouble, your source of hope and what you believe will be tested. What do you believe? Where's your hope come from? If it's hope so faith, you're going to be really sorely tested. And you're probably not going to sleep at night. Amen? But what's your source of hope? And your source and resources will be tested. Your resources, you know, people's resources. You could say, I've got an... Let's say you're a business and you're right now you're going through COVID and you're like, I've got resources to keep me going for X number of months. But all of a sudden, your resources are tested because you can't make enough money or you're closed. See, our resource is God. Our source is God. We have to trust him even when, if all we trust him in is the money in the, that we have in the bank, it's going to be really difficult. Because remember, he is full of grace and truth, and he is super abundantly giving us all that we need. It may not look, it may, it probably is, I'm not saying that you're going to have a whole lot of money flowing in, but God will supply your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Pressure will come, or persecution, because the devil's going to put pressure on you. There's no way around it, you're going to have pressure. Because you put your faith in Jesus Christ, you're going to have pressure. And you're going to be 
tested. Close with this verse. So be truly glad, or so be truly glad there is a wonderful joy ahead, even though you must endure many trials for a little while. These trials will show that your faith is genuine. It is being tested as fire tests and purifies gold, though your faith is far more precious than mere gold. So when your faith remains strong through many trials, it will bring you much praise and glory and honor on a day when Jesus Christ is revealed to the whole world. As believers in Jesus Christ right now, our faith is being tested. Your faith, my faith, is being tested. Can I trust God for a good outcome? Can I trust God for a good outcome with the election? Can I trust God that he's not going to allow us to be destroyed by evil? Or that, can I trust God to believe that he's going to move one more time and we're going to see awesome things before he comes and gets us and takes us home? Now, if my, shit, my faith isn't strong, then I'm not going to trust him. I'm going to say, I don't know if that can happen. I don't know if God can do this. But I believe in that God's going to do this. And I keep praying that God's going to do this. And I'm going to, I keep praying that evil will be exposed. Do I believe that COVID is going to stop? Yes, I do believe COVID is going to, God's going to stop it somehow. Because if God's going to move with might and power and see, we're going to see many people saved. We can't have COVID in the way. They say that we can't have more than 50, let's say, in a service. I'm going to say, well, if God moves and if people are getting saved and we've got a hundred in here, I'm not stopping God. God is not going to be stopped by COVID. When he pours out his spirit and he moves and he does amazing things, he's not going to be stopped by COVID. Mm -hmm. That's what I believe. So therefore, I know that my God is going to stop this thing. I don't know how, I don't know when, but I know. Say so you go from hope so faith to no so faith, believing God that he's going to do. Amen? You love him though, he, even though you've never seen him, though you do not see him, now you trust him and you rejoice with a glorious, inexpressible joy. The joy of the Lord is our strength. But the joy will only come when we are so full of Jesus and so full of the Word of God that we don't have hopes of faith, but we have no soul faith. Amen? Let's pray. How many of you really need some, you need your faith, you need a faith infusion? Because things are wearing you down. The devil's doing all he can to weary the saints. And you're a saint when you know Jesus. And you're royalty. The devil knows that, and he knows too one thing about royalty. As a child of the living God, you have authority to pray in the name of Jesus and see God and believe God for miracles at hand for wonderful things to happen. But he wants to weary your faith and cause you to doubt and say, I don't see any hope. And God says, I'm going to give you a new infusion of faith and hope and joy and peace. I want to fill you with my Holy Spirit and empower you Because I believe that God wants to raise you up to be bold lions and lionesses for God, where you roar and you stand on the word of God and you see great things happen. So if you need an infusion of faith, I'm not even going to look around. I'm just going to ask you to raise your hand and just ask God, fill me up. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. 
Lord, I pray for everyone here. I pray that you will just fill them with your Holy Spirit and give them a new boldness and a new faith. I pray that you'll give them a rhema word from, your, from the Word of God. I pray that they'll get so hungry and they'll go burning with passion and look into the Word of God. And when they do, they're going to encounter a now word that you're going to speak through your Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit takes the Word of God and it brings life into it. And he will empower you with a new word of God to stand no matter what. You're going to have faith because you're going to have a life word. I pray a living word, Lord, to come into everybody's heart. Boldness, faith, the joy of the Lord, peace of God, everything they need. And I bless them abundantly in your name. I, I just bless them, Lord. And we give you the glory and the honor, and we thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So glad you're here today, and uh, just have a great, blessed week.